the final episode of a model steam engine test plant, part 32. A live steam test using a very good example of a Stuart Models factory machine kit twin Victoria steam engine that I rebuilt a while ago and which is now part of my personal collection. The first thing to do is to light the gas, which lights with a very healthy explosion and both burners light at the same time, which is really good. It's going to take a while to raise steam and also I'm using the gas canister, which is just below half full that I used in the last steam test. I have to do it this way, otherwise I just end up with a lot of gas canisters that are half full. This really good example of a factory machine kit from Stuart Models has a displacement lubricator and I'm filling that as well even though I don't need to because I built one into the plant. But this engine is not fully run in so a bit of extra oil won't be amiss. I filled the displacement lubricator using steam oil and now I'm using lubricating oil for the rest of the parts. I buy my oil from a company called Hallett Oils and it's very good stuff. Both the steam oil and the lubricating oil are the same that would be used on a full size steam engine. I'll put the web address on screen so you can see it clearly. Once upon a time I used to make my own lubricating oil using 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil which is also known as canola oil. You can buy this stuff in most supermarkets but make sure you get the extra virgin type. You don't want it to be too refined, it does work much better as an anti-friction additive if it's a first pressing. How do I know this? Well, a scientist at an oil refinery that I once worked on, I was there fixing the computers, told me all about it. Practically speaking, I put it to the test by lubricating an engine as it was running and it went faster without turning up the regulator. Because the gas tank is only half full, there isn't much noise coming from the burners and the gas is already starting to chill. I connected a couple of lengths of silicone rubber tubing to the exhaust pipes. I didn't bother connecting them to the condenser. Plus I wanted to check the status of the oil coming out of the cylinders. There's another piece of silicone rubber tubing connected to the lower water tank which goes into a can on the floor. Time to fill the upper water tank with some clean water. And before anyone asks, this is direct from my garden hose pipe. It's not distilled water or deionized water. It is just standard H2O. Here's a shot of the top of the chimney and my hand tells me that there is quite a lot of heat coming out of the chimney, but very little in the way of a bad smell. Here I'm just checking the displacement lubricator that's mounted on the turret. First of all, I'm closing the inlet valve and then opening it two turns. The next part of this video is of vital importance. A serious health and safety warning. This is something I occasionally do on cold days to prevent these small 70-30 gas canisters from chilling and forming ice on the outside. I place the gas canister in a tub of cold water and this works very well. However, I cannot recommend that you do the following. I only let a very tiny amount of steam from the water gauge blowdown valve into the water in the plastic tub. You must never directly heat the gas canister in the plastic tub, as this would be extremely dangerous. The water in the tub that surrounds the gas canister just needs to be tepid. Once upon a time, I used these gas canisters in model steamboats, and the heat of the sun when sailing on a lake in summer warmed the canister sufficiently and stopped it from chilling which is due to the internal liquid gas evaporating and that is where I got the idea from. Warning, do not try this at home. I can accept no responsibility whatsoever if you blow yourself up. Here you can see what I'm doing. I briefly open the blowdown valve on the water gauge to let a little steam and a tiny bit of water just to air the water in the plastic tub that the gas canister sat in. Even though nothing is showing on the gauge yet, there is some steam in the boiler. Here I open the injector steam valve and you can see how little pressure there is. This small amount of steam is useful. I can warm the cylinders on the engine by opening the regulator and manually rotating the flywheel. This engine is not fitted with drain cocks and it has two one inch bore cylinders. And the last thing I want to do is open the regulator and admit high temperature steam into cold cylinders. 
Shortly afterwards, the pressure gauge starts to rise, even though the gas canister now doesn't have much gas in it. This is a wonderful engine. It's timed to perfection. Well, almost, and it runs really well on next to nothing. I've run the engine frequently on compressed air, and one of the cylinders always emitted black oil, a sure sign that it's not fully run in. And that's why I'm using it for the steam test. It's going to be running for a long time. The pressure showing on the gauge is just over 25 PSI, and I'm really curious to see whether the injector works at this pressure. Here I'm adjusting the water valve, and the water from the overflow pipe stops, which means it's going into the boiler. It's a bit touchy at this pressure, but it's injecting water into the boiler nevertheless. In this next clip, you can clearly see that the injector is successfully filling the boiler with water. And the good news is, the pressure hasn't dropped much at all. In fact, it's still on the rise. The difference between the burners now and the way they were when I first got this boiler is staggering. In no time at all, the pressure continues to rise, and if you look at this clip, which is in real time, you can see the needle moving. I'm going to stop talking in the engine runs. Here's the first one. The engine was a bit gurgly at first until it fully warmed up and here the pressure gauge is showing 50 pounds per square inch or 50 psi and once again if you look closely at this clip you will actually see the pressure gauge needle moving and in no time at all the safety valve is blowing off and the engine is still running by the way The water level is dropping, but not much. Don't forget this is quite a large boiler at six inches in diameter. And also, because it is a water tube boiler, it's holding even more water. Note to self, it is a good idea to keep the upper water tank full. I've injected some more water into the boiler, and now the gauge is showing that it's almost full to the top. Never overfill the boiler, because you need to leave some space for the steam. The pressure's dropped, but the engine still runs. And even at this fairly low pressure, this engine is very powerful. I'm testing this with the very scientific method of holding my hand against the flywheel. I shut the regulator to stop the engine, and then I shut off the gas. I'm going to remove this gas canister and replace it with a new one. Even though you saw me earlier putting a small amount of steam into the water that the gas canister sits in, the canister is very cold to the touch. As I mentioned in the health and safety warning, the water that the canister sits in must not, under any circumstances, be hot. Here I'm fitting a brand new canister which is full all the way to the top with 70% butane gas and 30% propane gas. It's a good way of doing it really because as far as I'm aware butane has a higher calorific value but because the pressure is less the propane is added to improve this. You just heard me relight the burners via the chimney and I'm turning the gas up and you can already hear that the background noise is far greater than it was previously. The pressure goes from this to this incredibly quickly. Time to open the regulator.
this is the ideal scenario. The twin Victoria is running at an approximate scale speed and the safety valve is blowing off and the pressure on the pressure gauge is at 60 psi or just about. While the pressure is this good I think it's a good idea to inject some more water into the boiler and this time I've taken the water right into the top nut. This of course is filling my workshop with steam which could be a rust problem but thankfully it isn't, it's very well ventilated. Building this model steam engine test plant has been a bit of a challenge from what it first started as. It originally arrived with a Stuart No. 9 steam engine and the owner wanted to sell it but first wanted me to build it into a steam plant because he thought he would get more money for it that way which is possibly not the case. After a bit of discussion I gave the owner what I consider to be a very fair price for both the engine and the boiler. As you would expect with the engine running at this hypersonic speed the pressure in the boiler does drop but as soon as I stop the engine or slow it down the pressure goes back up. And it's worth mentioning that this clip shows the pressure when I was also injecting water into the boiler. It's now time to turn off the gas and see what happens. I'm opening the regulator valve on the turret fully. I just want to see how long the engine runs for before it stops. This is a large boiler and all of it is very hot so it should steam for a while without the heat source. The image is a bit shaky because the reciprocating mass of the engine is making the bench wobble. Time for a bit of slow motion I think. I couldn't really use the slow motion facility when both of the burners were running because the sound of the burners didn't sound very good in slow motion but now the burners are both turned off you can hear the engines beats very clearly. And don't forget there is no heat source whatsoever in the boiler it's just running off the residual heat contained within the copper of this large boiler. It's starting to slow down ever so slightly. It won't be long now before it stops. I felt that I had to edit the video at this point because I was personally losing the will to live. Another bit of slower slow motion. The engine continued to run until the bitter end. I don't know how much pressure there was or wasn't in the boiler, but it really wasn't much. This is by far the best twin Victoria I've ever owned. A final bit of slow motion, and this is really slow.
And that's it, we're all out of steam. But the video doesn't end there. It's in with the WD-40 and some steam oil to blow away all the water that's in the cylinders and the steam chests. When running cast iron steam engines, it's a really good idea to do this, otherwise the next time you come to run it, you may find it will not rotate. This particularly applies to steam engines that do not have drain cocks. You really don't want any water in the cylinders when you put them back on the shelf. And that, my friends, is the end of this double-length episode. While I'm cleaning off the water droplets on the main boiler plant, I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.